Right then, a shocking announcement, really, from uh, the world of West London uh, was that uh, Maurizio Pochettino, of course, uh, has left Chelsea by mutual consent. Um, it was said to be an amicable departure. Um, he uh, reportedly felt leaving was the right decision following discussions with senior club officials. Are, we all th- are you still thinking about the white water rafting trip? I am, <laughs> and I just think it's a shame that Todd Bowley is not going to be floundering in the water Thank- only for Poch to save him, like what happened to Daniel Levy, of course. They could, <laughs> they could still do the trip. Yeah. If it's, if it's, listen, put it this way, right? Yeah. You come out, you, you've you left Chelsea. Fair enough. We'll mm. talk about that, I'm sure. It happens. Uh, we'll get to that. It does happen. You're not the first person. You won't be the last. Yeah. Probably won't be the last this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you said it's on amicable terms. Yeah. What could be more amicable Indeed. than putting it all to one side, mm-hmm. packing mm. up your troubles in your old kit bag, That's it. and no, getting no, on the white raft and together? About, you're talking about David Brent with the charity check. I want Brokeback Mountain is what I want. That's exactly. Right. Okay. I know you you always want that, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're right, Andy. After the decision was made, did Poch turn up with canoe under his arm and go, right, Todd, are we off yeah. to Argentina? <laughs> yeah. So when David Brent stands up and he's got the ostrich thing, mm. when he's been fired, yeah. do you reckon that Poch stood up and wet the had a he, he wetsuit and life, <laughs> lifesaver and a, and a paddle? That's the end of that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> it's very he's, possible that um, you know Todd Bowley and Bedad Egg Barley didn't want to go whitewater rafting with Poch so much yeah. that they had no other other choice but to sack him it's like he's done really well but, but they, they, I just really don't want to go I will fall in it will be horrible it's in Argentina we just I, got to sack him I'm a multi-billionaire I will give him 10 million pounds I'm not going to what we're after trip we've all set fire to it, a 50 quid ticket for something we don't want to do mm-hmm. you know it's, it's, it's the it's the billionaire equivalent of that yeah. I think I'll tell you what if you're listening Poch yeah. and you might be listening he's got nothing else going on at the moment might be packing up his stuff in a box and listening to this mm. episode it's a bit if, of admin to do if he is yeah I, I will definitely come to Argentina and go whitewater after with you, mate. As long Would as you, you promise, the Euros? as long as you promise to keep Marcelo Bielsa away from me, ah. um, because that was what part of Pochettino's formative years, wasn't it? Mm. Getting um, mm. getting assessed, quote unquote, assessed by Marcelo Bielsa. Mm. I'll be back. By, I'll be back for the Euros. We've got a few weeks. I can squeeze it in. Mm. But it would be weird to be assessed by Bielsa, wouldn't it? He's just following you around with a clipboard, clipboard just yeah. like looking you up and down. Yeah. But he would assess you for the rest of your his ears. life. Yeah. Yeah. Like 10 years on from now, he just sort of pop up and go, yeah, yeah you, you need to track back a bit more. He it's wouldn't more react to rifle. anything you did. He wouldn't acknowledge yeah. that you spoke at all. It Same mood the whole time. But like it's an MOT the... on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the arrival at your house in the middle of the night, yeah. mm. isn't it? He drove I mean, for hours. He drove for hours. He drove all night <laughs> to get yeah, to Poch. There you go. He wasn't even Poch there, he was just a boy. That's true. Mm. But he was still called Pochettino. It's the origin story. Nickname. Young Pochettino. Young yeah. Pochettino. Well, he was, of course, Chelsea's sixth permanent manager in five years. Now, apologies to the person who who um, X'd this on Twitter, um, but the, somebody put a tweet out saying that uh, since the 21st century, Chelsea have had more managers than there have been popes since the, uh, <laughs> the tradition started in, like, I don't know, 1722 or whatever it was. Wow. And the no, amount popes of, have been around for thousands. In fact, no, maybe yeah. like 1322, yeah. whatever it was, an awfully long time. I'm going to look up when the first pope was. You carry on. The amount of people who um, were sucked in by that, that's an amazing stat. There's 266 popes. <laughs> 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 It was a piss take. Yeah. Um, so the well first, done, that man. The first Pope was in 29. 29? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, I, so I was a bit off. Yeah. <laughs> admittedly. Admittedly. Um, can I also just say that um, I'm going to read back what it says in the running on that you read, which is fair enough. Pochettino was Chelsea's sixth permanent manager in five years. Can we just get the word permanent removed from that sentence, please? <laughs> because to me, that is a complete lie. Yeah. yeah. It's just manager. There's nothing permanent about any of them. Nothing at all. What, I mean, what is permanent? Luke? Exactly. Also, Bruno Saltor is absolutely fuming. I yeah. mean, good enough for Jack's encyclopedia, not good enough for the main ramble running order. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a disgrace. It's a but, shame. But what do you make of, make of this, Andy? I mean, it seems to be quite a surprise. You know, they've finished the season strongly. They in the you know really should have won the League Cup final. I mean, yeah. Poch can't put the ball in the net for those players. He proved that could he have can, won the semi. Exactly. So he's proved against. Two of the best sides in the league. Yeah, he proved to two two of the best sides in the game, one-off games, that he could get the better of them, even though the result didn't go their way. So two very good cup runs and and a strong finish where they uh, got into the European places. And it's an important point, I think, because I, I think this season is a great example of Chelsea's sort of accelerated reality. Everything happens in a much smaller space than you would expect. So you look at them at the start of the season, and I think of them, what, remember, remember going to see them first time in the Fletcher season in the League Cup this season against Wimbledon. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, the only shot they managed on target in the first half from 85% possession was a penalty. Mm-hmm. Against the League Two side, that's which, quality. Well, yes, the quality of FC Wimbledon, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you've got pro- to factor pro- that in. You've got pro- to price probably, that in, haven't they? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. We've had to trample on some people to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, I, they I, will I, shut I think... you out, won't they? Yeah. Ask King Steinian. Yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> he's killing. He's fuming. He's fuming. <laughs> Andy Reddick from Jim. <laughs> it's like the Raptors in um, I've, I've said to I've said to you it's so like the Raptors many times, in Jurassic Park. He thinks it's coming from me, but it comes from Jim. Can we save the most ignorant stuff for the Patriots? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, I think the the amazing thing is how Pochettino's got to a point where in the last couple of months they've looked so coherent. Mm. At the start of last summer, it should have been evident to anyone, and that's why I was saying if we go back to last at the start of the season, where I was saying. If, they're, if Chelsea are being consistent to Chelsea, they'll probably sack Pat Pochettino before Christmas mm-hmm. because any previous Chelsea regime probably would have done. And it felt like they'd got through that bit and they'd got their reward. And what Pochettino has done in a season at Chelsea really, realistically, should have taken him a year and a half, two years. For them to be this coherent in the last couple of months of the season mm-hmm. is really It's impressive. actually since the turn of the year. They've, I think yeah. they've only lost one, one or two Premier League games this year. Mm. Yeah, you can divide the season into yeah. two halves, can't yeah. you? And so, so it's tempting to say, oh, look, this is Chelsea doing what Chelsea always do, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think if you look at it a little bit retrospectively in recent weeks where Pochettino's sort of done this back me or sack me act in public. Which he does all the time, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, it is very much him going for more power, isn't it? And... I guess the question is, is he looking for something and will he always be looking for something that he had at Spurs that he's never going to have again? Mm. Because if we're talking about it being a problem, if we're talking about it being genuinely mutual, say we take that at its word for, for a minute. If we're talking about him like wanting more control, you can't realistically want that at a modern football club of that size. It's, yeah, it's just it's just not normal, is he's, it? He's always he's uh, even in you, you refer to the Spurs years there, where he of course got to a Champions League final, had some good times there. He's thinking he's still very much kind of respected, at least if not loved, maybe even at Spurs. He still come up with some really odd stuff quite regularly. I mean, he challenged Levy quite a lot around signings. Fine, that was in an era when Levy wasn't spending as much money or yeah. perceived to be spending as much mm. money. But I, I can remember when they got to the Champions League final. I mean, some of the quotes in the build-up to that final, because you have a big, long, two-week kind of stint to build yeah. up to it. It's a lot of yeah. interviews. Gap some between of, the end of the domestic yeah, season. Yeah, some of yeah. the stuff he was saying, well, I mean, if you go back and look at it, I haven't got it in front of me, but from memory, some of the stuff he was saying was odd. Like, very was odd. Was he going on about the lemons, was he? Yeah. It, it wasn't even, it was pre-lemons. Are they going to um, keep those? Yeah, maybe. Well, you might lem- as well. No, I think the lemons go. I, I think, think Jim, they take Jim, two years, right? Love so, me, love my lemons. Just... Jim, when, what's the harm in chucking out the lemons? When Poch gives you lemons, yeah. you make lemonade. Mm. Yeah. I think it's um possibly this kind of little bit of a power struggle comes from the fact that, you know, these owners are very chaotic, right? Mm. I mean, it's probably it's a quite different situation at Spurs where Yeah, but well, that's fine. I, sorry to cut you off, but just to finish the point I was gonna make, um, that's fine. I'm not disagreeing with that, but what I am saying I was building up towards saying is that he seems to be a very emotionally led character. Sure. Oh, he definitely and, is. That, and some yeah. of the stuff he comes out with, and some of the, it's always it always feels to me like he's trying to push a bit more and push a mm. bit more and push a bit more all the time. And if you if we're being completely even handed about the about his managerial career, ultimately he's in his fifties and he's never really won much as a coach. Yeah, yeah. So well, the idea of him and the reputation of him, partly because of what he's done at Spurs, partly because he used his PSG voucher to get a few trophies there is above what he's actually apparently capable of as a manager. Now, it may well be that Chelsea would have gone to do great things. The point is, we're never going to know that because however yeah. he's departed from Chelsea, he's obviously played a part in it. Presumably, the the, the uh, rate of progress they were looking at didn't look like it was going to be quick enough for them because the thing that's interesting about this to me is that they've spent a lot of money on young players. They're mm-hmm. very clearly trying to, you know, build a team for for the future. Obviously there's going to be some, you know, they'll be selling on some of those players, some of those players because they signed so many. So it all looks very long term, you know. It it felt like there was a there was mm-hmm. a plan there to to bed these players in, get them playing coherently. Then the moment he actually appears to have done that, or certainly, you know, this yeah. in in this year as as we talk about because they've been, they've been excellent. Um you know, it's not quite enough. It's fascinating but, because the danger is obviously that, that, that you know, they set that plan back again now because 
the, the managers they're being mm-hmm. linked with, obviously we only know so much from, from what's come out in the last day, but they're all young managers without a huge amount of pedigree. So there's no guarantee that they're actually even going to maintain the level that Pochettino has got them to, let alone surpass it. Yeah, I mean, you, you have been linked with young, young managers. You're, you're absolutely right to say that, although I'm pretty sure, like the what, Ramble WhatsApp group and WhatsApp groups up and down the country, they were being linked to an older oh, manager, they, they, a former manager of Chelsea. Come on. Come on. Frank Lampard. <laughs> the of, no, but seriously. The, the amount of gifts of Mourinho I shared in the WhatsApp group yesterday. Just trying to will it into existence. Yeah, I, just, I can't want it to happen enough. Um, it, it, surely, surely, it's, Andy, it, it's Mendes not. has made inquiries. He must have. He must have at least said, look. Well, he's the busiest man in football. Of course he has. Yeah, yeah. he must have done. What happens if he just turns up? Yeah. He's got the strength of will and the strength of charisma to just write out his own contract what, Clay, and sign it in like front of him. Probably still like, got the tracksuit. Like exactly. squatters rights, he just claims Mourinho rights. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think he's probably, I That's think how he lives his life. That's how he got the Man United job. There's a, there's a percentage of Chelsea fans who would be up for it. And 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 a hundred percent from us. Yeah. Oh, we'd be well. Yeah, but you've got a full house here, Jose. If you have to choose... come home, Jose. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're welcome every time. time. <laughs> it, <laughs> if that's going to happen, it will be mid-season replacing someone. Won't it? it doesn't feel look, like look, he'll start a season. I'm really sorry. It's not going to happen. Oh yeah. Can you're you right. think? I keep forgetting. Jim, wink, wink. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> They're more intelligent than that. The Chelsea. Board. The thing is, none of us want this. It's really annoying when he's in the Premier League. He's horrible. He just no, we love ruffles it. everyone. Yeah, but he's he's done that thing. Quickly. He's done that thing to us that he does to all his clubs. Yeah, sure. He makes us love it. We want him to. We want him to leave Stockholm when he's there. Syndrome. Yeah, totally. And then when he's gone, we want him to come back. Yeah, the the idea is nicer than the reality. Uh, I, th- I think it's fair to say. I disagree, I I disagree with that as well. I can't think of. <laughs> I can't think of a worse fit for Chelsea at the moment. Like, no, exactly, gonna, Andy. He's, he's not going to go. So who do you think at this very early stage, Andy? Who, who does, does anybody leap to well, mind? The, I mean, Amarim is question, obviously. Uh, high he's stock. not. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. He's staying at Sporting next season. So Sporting Lisbon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the locals call him Sporting Lisbon, Andy. Yeah. Look, we already made the agreement for the separate <laughs> parts. <laughs> I made the agreement. I, I think. It's, it's quite interesting in that, as you say, the young managers they may be looking at just makes you think they're going to repeat the Graham Potter mistake. Now, I, like I said, I don't think it's it's all Chelsea's fault, this. Because if we are looking at this as genuinely mutual, and I, I think it's... That's it's, what the it's, reports are saying, so that's yeah, what we've yeah, got, 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 got to go on. I think it's reasonable to do so when you look at the dynamics yeah. of yeah, it yeah, as yeah. well. Like, Pochettino has done some incredible work mm-hmm. in recent months, so it is a shame that he can't stay. But if he wants to take the club in a completely different way to the way yeah, that they exactly, want, to, yeah. want to run it, if he's going to stop them or if he's going to try and stop them selling, say, Conor Gallagher, uh-huh. Trevor Chalobah, which they definitely need to do because you talked about that long-term plan. It's a long-term plan until the point where they realise, oh, shit, actually, mm. we're going to have to balance the Well, books. they're apparently spending £60 million on um, Esteval Willian as well, so they're, they're still spending. Maybe yeah. Pochettino's looking at the future going, Argh. yeah, I know, but I, well, not that's, for me, this. That, that's absolutely it. But also, you know, the, the club, it's been a good end to the season, but it's not been amazing from Pochettino this season. And, you know, remember Eric Ten Hag? Remember him? Um, great first season and bad second season. There's no guarantee. So perhaps they're thinking, as you say, they're at this no, loggerhead. If, if we're looking at the content rather than the results, I, sure. I, I think but Pochettino if at, has... But like clearly turned a corner. But if they're at a loggerheads with Pochettino over this, again, it's not like you're, you, you've got a Premier League champion there. No, you're you're 100 percent mm. right. But the other hand of that is, if you look at the sort of coaches they're being linked to, and it's better to be linked to a certain type of coach rather than say be Bayern and linked with every type of coach under the sun, which proves that you've got no idea. Yeah. The the, the problem is, it just looks like they're gonna set up their Graham Potter Mark II. Yeah. And then, as Jim says get to the point where you have to make a change in November or, or, or whatever. It's quite interesting at the LMA Awards last night, Kieran McKenna was the dictionary definition of evasive when asked about oh, his future. no. And I was worried that you were going to say it's this. It's a real shame. Yeah. yeah. I thought it, you were going to mention... a real shame. I thought you were going to mention John Massino getting League One Manager of the Year there, Andy. Missed opportunity for a big story to tell, tell the listeners about. Really? Yeah. He's mm. not been linked with Chelsea, thankfully. With a name like that, it wouldn't be surprising. I know. <laughs> we have. Have you got? Have you? Have you got him in? Kind of. Yeah, we've got. Uh, m- 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 yeah. back. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Did you say Mourinho? Was that Mourinho? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That was from video with just the JM on the track. <laughs> <laughs> And, and if it all goes, it be, if it all goes well, it could be Mikhailo Mudrik getting his bum out in the slug and lettuce this time next be, year. It could well be. Um, I think that if Kieran McKenna went to Chelsea, it would be very, very sad. Yeah. It, very. I, I, I think. He 
I mean, it, it, it goes against all my sensibilities. We need to see a manager in Ipswich in the Premier League. We have yeah. to see that. Yeah. It would be so sad if he went to Chelsea. I think be. Brighton seems more possible than that. Um, but it's it's sad that, that you know, that, that, that it looks like he might not be Ipswich manager at the start I of mean, the season at all. Interesting you mention that. I mean, De Zerbe, you know, could, they could do worse, Chelsea, if they went for... Eric Ten Hag's a bit worried now, isn't he? But do you think they're going to go the... for Ten Hag? <laughs> well, <laughs> I would be okay. Yeah. I think that we'd be okay oh, with that. that. Eric has to stay. Yeah, that that is recycling. the best possible outcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poch and, then, and Eric Ten Hag swap jobs. Yeah. Incredible. No, Mourinho goes back to Man United. Of course. Yeah. Big, Big Vish was saying, Big Vishy was saying that he wants, um, he wouldn't mind Poch at United. I mean, they, yeah, they, they wanted him for, for a long us. time, didn't they? Yeah, they did. So, we'll see. I mean, it would kind of work if you're, well, maybe they're moving out of the the area where they just don't have that much sporting knowledge in the boardroom. <laughs> Although they, they do have Sir Jim Radcliffe in there now, so maybe I'll take that all yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knows he's on you, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, Vincent Company being linked to Chelsea as well. His agent's had a busy week, isn't yeah, he? his agent must be a fucking... Who's his agent? The fairy godmother from a Disney movie. <laughs> who's, is his agent the fucking genie from Aladdin? <laughs> <laughs> it must be. Yeah, he's been linked to Bayern. Yeah. That'd be gutting for Harry Kane, wouldn't no, it? He's literally right now singing You Ain't Never Had a Friend Like Me down the phone <laughs> to Vincent Company. <laughs> isn't he? I can't bring people back from the dead. Can you get me to buy a music job? Uh, that might be two of your wishes. Because that is a stretch. Unbelievable. No, you can't wish yeah. for more wishes. I've got other clients, Vincent. Yeah. <laughs> We're all said and done, though. Another man has left the hot seat yes. at Chelsea. Yeah. And I'd like to draw attention to another man who was once in the hot seat at Chelsea. Claudio Ranieri has retired from football management after leaving Cagliari, as I believe it's pronounced. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> Cagliari. Um, he ensured their Serie A survival at the weekend, which is no mean feat, of course. And uh, just one of the most endearing, lovely and gentle men of football. Mm, a really pure soul. Yes, I think so. And uh, I take that photo of him on his Wikipedia page as, he, as a younger man. Oh, that's great. I've got it in front of me now when he's at Roma. Can't stop looking at him. Look at him. He look looks great. He looks a lot of Pete Doherty, actually. He does a bit, yeah. 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 There's yeah. a tiny bit of the Donaldson in there as well. Yeah, I know well, well obviously. Because like yeah, he's yeah. A, a human being. Yeah. 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 Um, but he's glorious. I mean, I, Who could have forget that stint he had as Greece manager? For <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're bringing up, are you? I, I think that's for, what for you're me, going for. the moment is when he arrives at Monaco and in the press conference, he says, I only know how to say one thing in French. Je suis Catherine Deneuve. What's okay. that? I'm Catherine Deneuve. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make any sense. And we're like, oh. Well, that, that, that's, that's what he said. And all the French <laughs> journalists were like, we thought you were Claire Renier. <laughs> oh, okay. um, and then he said, dilly ding, dilly dong. And they were like, fine. Yeah. Um, I, I love the fact that if you look through his managerial career at Cagliari, um, at Fiorentina, at Monaco, he wins the second tier mm. in, in, in uh, you know, so obviously um, Serie B and then um, Ligue 2 in, in France. Um, and at Valencia, there's a, there's a Copa del Rey in there and, uh, and a Super Cup as well, no mean feats. Um, so you, you look at that, if you were to just take that step, you say, okay, you're at the second tier in, in some of the countries, you're obviously, you know, pretty good at getting promoted because the, the gaps between promotions were huge at Cagliari, 1989-90 season, and then 22-23. Mm. And then... Of course, there's just that glaring, wonderful in race title win at Leicester City. <laughs> He's responsible for the greatest achievement in the history of team sport. Wow. Mm. Wow. That is it's a big claim, but it's in the conversation, isn't it? It is the conversation. No, Jim, Jim, like that steward we heard say to that Man City fan who was celebrating in the Fulham end. Being kicked the, out. Yeah, it's not a conversation, all right? <laughs> it's not a conversation. It's done, okay? Um, wankers, wankers. <laughs> it's how he responded, if anyone's wondering. Yeah. Something, something about the way he brought out Andrea Bocelli when they celebrated the title <laughs> as well. This is well, an all-time great that, moment. That's, that's the thing. I think especially you talked about him being a, a gentle soul and one of the nicest guys. He's someone who's really tough when he has to be. And I actually think if you look at the way, if you go back to earlier in his career, well, I, I suppose the midpoint in his career where Mourinho mm. sort of tears him out in public and go, oh, you're just some old guy who hasn't won anything. And then you go and yeah. win the league yeah. with the, the, most, City the most in stunning. the same year that Mourinho gets sacked yeah. from Chelsea yeah, 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 and yeah. bring out Andrea Bocelli to do the <laughs> and the, the same lap. year that you say you're not going to watch the key Chelsea Spurs game in that title race because you've promised your 96 year old mum you go for lunch with her in Rome. Yeah, that mm. is class. 
Mm. And dilly ding, mm. dilly dong as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just gibberish. And everyone's like, no. Oh, that's yeah. endearing. I, honestly, like that, I, again, we could look at Ranieri in, in a certain light, which we do. I think, yeah, he was, he was a pretty good manager. And, and, and I think that's fair. Because as you say, you know, Greece, it was a, it was a disaster and mixed bag in one or two places. But that Leicester City title word, I know it, you, I, it's been said to death, but... It, it is well. I've already said what I wanted to say about it, so we'll miss him. From it's probably the, the most ringing all. endorsement of, from a Fulham fan you're going to hear today. I expect. Well, yes, it's because he's still Fulham. Still Fulham was very, very poor. Yeah, but the thing is, if you do that many jobs, not all of them are going to come off. Exactly. I mean, you could say that about any coach, really. I definitely saw that moment at the weekend, though, where he thought, "This isn't for me anymore." When they won at Sassuolo to oh. clinch staying up Cagliari, and his players like cheered him, and they were spraying him with. Um, in front of the fans I spraying him with water and he just had this look on his face like I'm 70 I can't do this anymore yeah. I can't get chaired when we escape relegation next season <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well he got out when the going was good Andy I think it's fair yeah, to say so. but look, look, joking aside legendary figure great merger amazing man um, wish him all the very best in his retirement absolutely right Yeah, I'd love to see him as a pundit over here at some yeah. point mm. I'd love to see him back at um, Everton in about December <laughs> it's possible isn't it think about it it's possible these guys they can't give it up how many times has Neil Warnock retired that's mm. true you know? Different for a different type of man, though. Oh, know. very much so, yeah. Mm. Um, right. Uh, speaking of uh, Premier League title wins, um, footage of Man City's title parties emerged since we recorded on Monday. A few players, most notably Jack Grealish. It's always the yeah. ones you least expect, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're pictured leaving um, at approximately 5am, a little worse for wear. Uh, but the surprising thing was is that Scott Carson... <laughs> was reportedly kicked out of the party for getting in the fight. It's Who amazing. Is Stefan Ortega. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'm the number three, two, two, three. What? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like, what's going on, Jim? He looks so sheepish in the photos as well. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. But sort of, he's half laughing as well. Yeah. It's a strange mix where maybe this is Scott Carson's last season at Man City. Maybe wow. Scott Carson will be there forever. Mm-hmm. Um, he could be their number three for the next five years. Pep, yeah, Pep absolutely loves him. It's yeah, brilliant. I mean, he must be the best bloke. I mean, this suggests not. Well, but, 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 <laughs> mind you, we don't know who was fighting though. Yeah, could have been an intruder. Pep says, um, and also we go on the Daily Mail article. I mean, yeah, it could be anything. Couldn't yeah, it? yeah. Same so, pictures have emerged. Yeah. Some rats were waiting outside with cameras. Yeah, True, basically, yeah. He, he might not have been in a fight at all if it was in the Pep, Daily Mail. Pep said about Pep said about Scott Carson. The people maybe don't know, but he's a real leader. He says what he believes. He's got a lot of experience with big teams. He's an incredible person that everybody loves. Him so much. Yeah, but Pep does love giving a lot of compliments. I think people. it's a nice thing to say. It is a lovely thing to and, say. And I think also with the, with these photos, I mean, I, I totally, for the record, I put it on the record right now. I believe Jack Greenish was pissed. But <laughs> moving on from that, yeah. um, I think some of these photos, particularly with someone, I, I don't know if Rodri's a sesh gremlin himself, but <laughs> I suspect, I suspect a, a lot, a lot of continental European players, obviously, famously, don't drink at all. It's not part. Yeah. Of well, it. if they do, they don't binge. But but I th- but I think what what sometimes I see when I look at say a photo of Rodri, and I could be wrong in this instance, but as a general point, you've got paparazzi there snapping mm. hundred photos mm. a minute. And they just find one with the eyes slightly yeah, closed yeah, yeah, and yeah, looking yeah, yeah. a bit unsteady and go, oh, look how pissed he is. I don't think that's proof that they're pissed, is all I'm saying. Well, so, so should they have like little match sticks to hold yeah, up I think their so. eyelids? Yeah, yeah. And I then think... the way they walk out. The... Not you, Jack, there's no point. Yeah. <laughs> although yeah. although they, they, they may be accused of something else. Yeah. With one of the pictures Jack Grealish was in, the, the sun had come up. So, I mean, that's, that's all right, stand out late, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, pre- presumably, a bit, a bit by you, Jim. <laughs> I was going to say. Presumably, he was staying up to work out how to actually use that confetti cannon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. He, he looked fantastic. He had um, what looked like Gucci pajamas on. I think they're Louis Vuitton. Mm, right. I think they were, apparently he bought them for two thousand pounds just for the party. <laughs> that's what people say. What people say. <sighs> how about that? You know how the other half live, eh? Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of title celebrations, everybody, let's go to um, Holland or the Netherlands, as uh, as the whole thing is called. Um, there's a Dutch referee now called Jan Smit, who we all know and love, because he's been banned for life. Now, normally, if you get banned for life, it's for doing something a little untoward. Whereas this guy is a flipping legend. Um, <laughs> he was banned for life because he celebrated um, with the side who'd won the title and. And, and he just officiated the match in which they won the title. So you, it's, it's Dutch fourth division side St. George's who secured this title by drawing with SV de Valken. And the, the St. George's goalkeeper was the hero after he scored a stoppage time equaliser. So, so an incredible uh, scenario. <laughs> There's incredible already so much going on here. And, and, and an, awful, an awful lot going on there, absolutely. The goal came after the referee had awarded... <laughs> 
<laughs> it, I mean, it gets worse and worse it really and worse. Does. It's it like, really it's so like, bad. It's like Dante's seven levels of fucking hell. Come yeah. on, you've got to get through it. So the referee awarded 15 <laughs> minutes of stoppage time. Now, I don't reckon they have VAR in the fourth tier of Dutch football. Could be wrong. So this is but, the equivalent of League Two. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, is it professional at that stage? And and it's not, no, is it? No, not in the league. So 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 fifteen minutes of stoppage time. Um, De Valken ended the game with eight men after the ref sent three of their players off. Right. So it's fair to say St George's were given a help again. After the game, the ref was filmed lifting the trophy and singing with the St George's players. <laughs> yeah. And he, he was wearing a shirt covered in cannabis leaves as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, legend yeah. a legend the thing yeah, is have you seen his response to it Yeah, he, he thinks it's all over the top well, all alone yeah. and nonsense I wasn't partying with the players at all I just sang a song and held up the bowl once <laughs> <laughs> I just happened to be singing a song I was <laughs> celebrating the, the circumstantial evidence is overwhelming isn't it? <laughs> let's be absolutely fair I mean they can, you can't do me for assault I only punched him once yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, be, let's be clear none of us watched the game Right, uh, so maybe those three players justifiably were sent off. Maybe, maybe, and they didn't leave, and there was an understandable fifteen minutes of injury. I, I love the lack of self awareness. The referee's gone. That's a, that was a difficult game, that one, <laughs> wasn't it? God, I had to make some big decisions there. Yeah, probably best if I just keep my distance. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Oi, give us a lift of it, just once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nobody will see. Uh, and he's given it gusto as well. But yeah, he said, I find it too sad for words. So he's he's, he's sad. Is uh, his old Yan? I mean, banned for life. I mean, to be fair, he is sixty-one. Mm. So I'm not sure how many years he had ahead of him. <laughs> that seems to be like a very like a very kind of convenient fig leaf punishment for a sixty-one referee. Also, referee. it would have been sadder if his team didn't win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ah! Got out of the high. Exactly. Oh dear. Yeah. Coming up yeah. in the second half, we've got the England squad, of course. We've got some uh, other managerial news, uh, including uh, Julian Lopetegui, and we've got tonight's Europa League final. See you in a moment. <laughs> I want to thank everyone, but the main person I want to the main person that I want to thank is Bernardo Silva for coming off in the 70th minute because he was miles off it yesterday. Welcome back to the football ramble, everybody. That was Jack Grealish last season. Um, but you know, imagine being been such a season. good player, you can actually say, with all, all seriousness, to Bernardo Silva, you are miles off it today. <laughs> <laughs> that is like that is like but us mere mortals could not say that. Cannot, and we won't. Now then, Gareth Southgate has announced his provisional 33-man squad for Euro 2024. Immediate thoughts from you, Jim Campbell. Uh, it's exciting. My, uh, if you simply reading through the names of the midfielders and the forwards makes me giddy. Mm. I do wonder. Um, my initial thought is, I, there's still a sense that he doesn't know who the second centre back is, isn't there? I think there's a lot of experimental players in there. Understandably, I'm surprised Eric Dyer didn't make the cut because he's had a good season at yeah. Bayern. He's experienced, he's reliable, and he's in good form. We all know he can sort of be quite patchy in in terms of that, but he's very experienced and he is in a good run of form now. So, yeah, that's my my initial thought. Um, you and mean it's third obviously going to be because uh, it'll be Stones well, and Maguire. Yeah. Well, um, <sighs> Jim, it'll yeah. be Stones and Maguire. Yeah, see, this is what I'm sort of in denial about. I don't want it to be Maguire. I don't want it to be and Maguire. Right. He's never let England down. We he's, he's well, also, do we have to have this conversation again? Like, he's I'm also just... come out the other side of when he was in that really bad yeah. spot as, as, as well. So and, yeah, I th- now I think, he's in an okay spot. Yeah, but I, th- I think that's what we've got. I think the main concern really is is, is left back, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's the, the biggest concern. And, yeah. and who partners Declan Rice, really? Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And whether I mean, Declan Rice can be the Declan Rice that he was in previous tournaments because he's been let off the leash at Arsenal. That's I thought, right. I thought yeah. you were going to say whether Declan Rice can partner Declan Rice. I'm like, now, you, now, you, now you're getting somewhere. That'd Here be amazing. Go. <laughs> Two of them. Let's dolly the sheep in. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, so obviously Luke and I have spoken a lot about that left back position on Lions Watch we did last week. We'll be, we'll be talking more about it. Well, Listen, I had the whole Dan Byrne thing. Yeah, yeah thanks. Man. What's wrong with that? Well, uh, I look at Brussel giving digs out. No, yeah, well, Andy, myself, and and Gareth Southgate obviously disagree with you. I look. We're not going to do it again. On I've said your it once. road. On your <laughs> road. That's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. Just listen, everyone. Just listen, everyone. Yeah, exactly. Listen to the episode. Yeah. Um, so you really want to hear me embarrass myself? Listen to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so some uh, notable um, call ups. Uh, Adam Walton has earned. Um, his first England call-up. Now, obviously, it's a provisional side. It will yeah. be, be reduced to 26 players, of course. So there will be, um, the, the, you know, a number of these players won't make it. But Wharton's in there. 
I would think he would be one that perhaps wouldn't make the squad. Uh, yeah, in I the mean, Euros. There, there are two ways of doing this, aren't there? You yeah. can have your 26 in the reserves, which is, say, how Croatia have done it, for example, or you can do this, which kind of creates a like a bit of know, tension or a, jeopardy. Yeah, a, a, a bit of like competition mm-hmm. almost, or at least um, surface level, ostensible competition. You'd imagine Southgate would be fairly clear, though, if, if that wasn't the case, if it was a case of reserves, mm. you would expect him to be. Um, talking to the players and saying, "Look, this is what I've got planned for you." Yeah, I suppose. But I... Should there be injury, or, or actually go out and prove in, in training? Yeah. Because if someone's having a mare in training, or yeah. whatever, these things do count. How much they count for, we I don't mean, know. But there's 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 two ways of framing it, isn't, isn't there? That idea that you want your first twenty six to to feel that security, mm-hmm. or on the other hand, you do want to create that competition. You want to have a high intensity of training from the very beginning. And you don't want to create that thing that if someone, say a Luke Shaw, for example, is not fit and doesn't make it, someone's drafted in. It's like, oh, well, you weren't really first choice, yeah. but but mm. be, be with us now. So <clears throat> there's there's two ways of doing it. I wanted to ask you actually, Jim, when you were saying how exciting that is, especially with lots of, lots of those sort of young attacking players. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Does it make you feel as if we're getting to the end of Southgate that he's sort of a little bit off the leash? All of a sudden, it, I can't remember a point where England have felt this top-heavy as governed by the choices of the coach. Yeah, although I think part of that is a personnel issue, isn't it? It's just the, the, mm. the talent is, is really stacked in that direct direction. Yeah, and true. There's a little bit of a ruthlessness coming out as well. Henderson and Rashford not mm-hmm. making the squad is, mm-hmm. is interesting because yeah. the criticism he's had is, is, of course, of being over-loyal to players when they're not in form. Um, Henderson's had such a, you know, such a complicated season and we were all sort of assuming that it was going to pick him, right? You made the point very mm. very well, I thought, Marcus, that if something happens to Declan Rice, who else is there to step up? So maybe have Henderson as that sort of safety net. Mm-hmm. He's decided not to go with that yeah. very clearly. Yeah. And I think that's that's a positive step, isn't it? And it, mm-hmm. it feels like the handbrake coming off a little bit and not worrying about every possible eventuality, which is quite good. Um, if Declan Rice gets in, like we are screwed. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Um, is that your reason for having Eric Dyer in the squad? No, it wasn't actually. I the, thought Dyer... He could, he could sit there if needed in an emergency. Yeah, I mean, look, Dyer's not in the squad. Um, but that, no, wasn't, sure. that wasn't the, the My reason. My reason was because I called you up and you told me how brilliant he'd been for Bayern Munich, so I just took your word for it. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe John Stones would do that in that yeah. situation. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, true. Quite possibly. That, that, is, that is an area of the pitch that... that Southgate needs to look at, of course. Um, and the big story for us, though, is that is that you know is, is Nick Pope's it, not in there. In re- well, yeah. In recent tournaments, we've had two Marcuses in there, yeah. and it is always nice to have a Marcus in there. It is. Now there are no Marcuses in there. Well, how's that going to affect it? This is where I break it to you. What Mark Gay's name is Marcus Gay, really? I I, I got a little <laughs> phone call from Gareth. Did you? And he said, "Stop you, ringing me." He said, "He said, how do you look in an M and S suit?" I said, "How do you think?" Yeah. I said, "I can sit on the bench, the Beckham yeah. Roll, 2010." It it's mine, me. baby. I must finish Baby Reindeer. <laughs> I was going to say that. Um, it's, it, you're following up on the Jim's point about Henderson. I, you know, I, I am actually pleasantly surprised that mm-hmm. Gareth Southgate has not picked Henderson. Yeah. I think it would have mm-hmm. been um, a quite corrosive thing to do. Uh, for the fan base and it, it's it's an easy win for him and it's easy for me to say that but you know he has to you know, have the bravery to do it but the, the way it's gone at Ajax has made it easy for him I was going to say it's I, a great I, PR win for him I don't, I don't think it is to do with those reasons you, you say that makes it easier but I think Andy's right he's, just, he's not played enough he's not done enough no, but I've not, I've not, I've, not, I've not said that's why he's done it I've, right. said, I've said that um it was a he, he could have reverted to type and picked him and said all the stuff that Henderson defenders have said over the last six to nine months, you know, he's a great leader, he's great with the squad, he's mm-hmm. great in training, blah, 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 and could have justified it. I think it would have been the wrong move and I think it would have just got him off on the wrong foot in a PR fashion with the fan base. So I'm pleased he's done that. I think it's easier. And of course, that the reason he's done it is because he's not been very good for ages. I totally get mm-hmm. that. It's easier to leave out Marcus Rashford when he's had the season he's had, chiefly because there's so many players out there that can do that job. If in Anthony position. Gordon hadn't been so good this season, if Anthony Gordon had, said, had an okay season, maybe Rashford gets in, maybe not. I don't know. Mm. But again... So are you saying these are big decisions that aren't really big decisions? Yeah. I, They're kind I, of self-evident No, I don't decisions. think so. Well, I, you could frame it like that, but I think... I think but his name's 33. He's not even in the 33. Yeah, and mm. I think that's a good point because, yeah, you could have him in there. And I, and also, Rashford has been in, in every squad for Southgate since he's got, you know, at major tournaments. Yeah. So I think I think it is a big decision in, in that regard. I mean, he's not had a good season. We know Rashford, but he has had moments. You know the obvious one being the goal at Man City. You know, there's, there's something to there's a, if you have a tiny little hat, you can hang it somewhere. With, with it's, it's a remarkable thing that Gareth Southgate has is being 
brave now in the way that he maybe hasn't been in the past. Yeah. I think it could be the making of him. But when you, I mean, when we talk about this sort of bravery from Southgate, I, I just think he's picking what he thinks is the best squad, and I think he's all, yeah. always done that. I don't think. But he's done I, it in a very different way in previous squads. Is the point, isn't well, it? Well, but the, but the, I. Pff. But, but who has he left out in previous squads, really, that you thought, I cannot believe... Again, some of the comments that, that you see, you know, Tyrick Mitchell may have thought he had a chance to get into a provisional yeah. 33. He hasn't gone. And, and you see some of the comments, England won't win or lose the Euros based on whether Tyrick Mitchell is in the provisional 33 true, squad. True. You know, so, so these kind of comments, he's, he's not left out. Um, there's not been any real glaring admissions for, for my money, unless I'm missing something but, from, but from you, previous you could, squads. You could argue, if we're talking about a, a possible switch of mindset that Rashford could have easily fulfilled what Jim was saying before with, with the Maguire role. You know, if you're if you're sticking with Maguire the whole way, mm-hmm. it would be consistent to that credo to stick with Rashford despite the fact he's had a but very Rashford, poor, Rashford's poor not been a starter season. in tournaments for England, though. Mm, yeah. And whereas, whereas Maguire has. Yeah, and Maguire has yeah. been named in at least one team of the, of the tournament. I, I think what's interesting is the idea that if you look at the, 20, the World Cup 2022 squad and this squad, there's nine changes. Mm-hmm in 18 months mm. that's quite a lot it it also it's, it, it's worth looking back to how um, it took him a while to seem to trust both Jack Grealish and James Madison and he there's a, a little bit less of that now it was like okay look there are some brilliant players here let's have a look at all of them yeah. essentially and the, the midfield is particularly interesting isn't it now obviously the, it's the it's going to be the sort of the most talked about position that, that third spot in midfield with, with Rice and Bellingham and there's a lot of candidates in there I mean Curtis Jones he couldn't get a look at in the last set of um, internationals because he was injured I think he'll be nailed on to start one of the two games before the tournament you would think Adam Wharton if he's there will possibly get that chance we've seen Kobe Mainu get a little bit of a go mm-hmm. like all three of those will get minutes in those games and that's that's the key battle, I think, within this squad with those two games coming up. And it's it's exciting because mm-hmm. all three of those players look like they could be really, really valuable and really handy. It might have come a little bit soon for perhaps all of them. Um, but Well, Jones has tournament experience with England under-21s. Yeah. It was really good. I think he's yeah. man of the match in and the final. They're quite joined up now, aren't they? they the are, age groups, and and Southgate himself has worked at that, having been under-21 manager, of course. I think with, with Adam Morton, he's in there in case, you know, perish the thought of an injury to Rice or even say Kobe Mainu I think Mainu will go I've, I've made Agreed. the point about him even starting um, you've got to have a plan in case something goes wrong and yeah. and Wharton is I would suggest is, is there is that I don't think he'll go to the tournament but yeah. again you know just because they're just doing training and having friendlies we've seen with England <laughs> yeah. and, and other sides injury, injuries do happen um, And it, it, but I do understand what you're saying Jim totally I mean Trent Alexander-Arnold is there as to, to play if he would play mm. next to Rice that, that, that kind of role so um, yeah I mean one of the big talking points which I think we're going to talk about on Lions Watch is was where Phil Foden will play because a lot of people now <laughs> saying he plays central I wouldn't take him Every single um, Marcus, it, I wouldn't take him in a fight. No, because he's small. But what? A, you know, oh, he definitely rocket. beat me in a fight. But um, uh, when he'd have my full support, but uh, <laughs> just with his right foot. <laughs> but a lot of stroke me into the into the bin. <laughs> stroke my head into the fucking skip. <laughs> um, back where you came from. Yeah, um, exactly. But uh, a lot of people have been saying that Foden should start centrally, but they never ever then say where they'd put Bellingham. So, uh, you I've know, told you where, I've told you I've answered that question a million times. You just don't, you just don't accept it. other than Luke, the lot of the people you. have said that, you know, where, where would you put Bellingham? I don't know. But in terms of Southgate and, and, um, being loyal to players and, and, and whatnot, you know, I mean, look at Raheem Sterling, such an important mm. player. I know he's been out for a while. So it was not a, it wasn't a surprise for everybody. Um, I mean, even if, you know, if Southgate was that coach... He scored the final day of the season, didn't he? Or he, he, he did. Or I mean, I don't yeah. think he's had a terrible season by any stretch, yeah. but, you know, he, he's not there now. You know, it, it's, it's pretty brutal. Jaden Sancho is about to play in a Champions League final. Won't even be considered yeah. by, by Southgate. And he's really. fuming about people saying he should be considered as well, by the way. And he might need a moment to just clarify what he actually thinks. So go on. Like, if you've watched him on a regular basis... Since well, he's well, arrived at Dortmund, I he's, haven't. No, he's a work in progress. He's nowhere near. Yeah, okay. right. Um, and also, again, if Southgate was ridiculously loyal, <laughs> Mason Mount would be in the conversation. Yeah. You know, come so, on. So there's a no, but I'm saying that people often say this, so I just. But I, people, I mean, the Sancho thing, I'll defer to Andy. Watched him much, much more than me. Accepted. Yeah. A lot of good players in that position. Mm-hmm. You can't be talking about anyone who mentions Mason Mount in there. I'm using him as an example to show that Southgate has not got this blindsided loyalty that mm. people think he has. The only person that he's being 
incredibly loyal to, if you like, is Luke Shaw. Mm. And, and that's a that's a practicality. Isn't that it? is a practicality. And, he's also, he's, yeah. and Luke Shaw's also, I mean, it's different because he's not actually done anything wrong. No, he's, he's been I'm sure. sure. And he is by far England's best left back. Yeah. Mm. But um he's been very interesting on that, hasn't he, Southgate? Because he's publicly said he's a long way away from it, but because he's our first choice, mm. we're we're gonna give him that chance to try and help him get back up to speed. I expect it'll probably be Kieran Trippier that starts that first game mm. in June. Um but because Shaw's a funny one, isn't he? He he doesn't strike me as a player who can get up to speed immediately. Mm-hmm. Some players are brilliant at that. You would think Trippier himself actually would be a, be an example of that. If he'd been out for a while, you'd think, you yeah. know what, he's He's probably good enough to do it. Uh-huh. Sure, I'm not so sure about. Right. It's yeah. um. It's a. That's the problem position, really, isn't yeah, it? It's a funny it is, thing, yeah. isn't it? Because Trippi has not looked great since he's come back. Either. No, he's not. He's not you, had a great season. You either. just hope he's one of those players now, which you wouldn't put it past him that mm. he can now lean on experience and and yeah. and, and find his done. tournament level. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You, that, yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. He might even look at Joe Gomez there over these two games because he's played there a fair yeah. bit for Liverpool yeah. this season. Possibly. Yeah. So it will be interesting when he whittles this down to 26, um, as I say, and there'll be some names that will be left out which people go, how can you leave out mm. and so on. it's um, heartbreaking the whittling isn't it you look at this and you think that is a great squad that could go far in this <laughs> tournament because there are loads of players <laughs> there are so many players yeah. there we're going to make seven half time subs <laughs> um, nice to see Eberechi in there yeah, yeah absolutely we really yeah. think he should go to the tournament and uh, I wouldn't put it past him Right, everybody, if you want to hear more about the England squad and where we really drill down into specific positions and players, Luke and I will be talking about that on Lions Watch uh, tomorrow. Now, back to the Premier League. It was reported yesterday that West Ham have now reached a full agreement to make Julian Lopetegui their new manager. Um, He will be announced by West Ham this week. We are reliably informed. Andy, you've spoken a bit about Lopetegui and what he may bring to West Ham. Remind us what you said. I'm fairly hopeful Mm. for him. Um, I thought he did a a pretty good job at Wolves having inherited quite a, a negative team uh, and for that reason he's got the he's been branded with being a negative coach which I, I don't think is especially fair um, West Ham will be a lot more possession based than they have been before I think getting him in early so he can make that commuting of style is is important look they're, they're not going to be as dazzling and innovative as they would have been if say Ruben Amarim would get the job but he's someone who, who knows his way around the Premier League I think he's a pretty decent coach yeah, the thumbs up from you. He's a Europa League winner as well. A trophy that eluded them this Yeah, I mean, has, has anyone been at Sevilla for more than five minutes and not won the Europa League um, in recent years? Get Poch in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'd say so. Yeah, uh, get Harry Kane there, that's what he was to sign for. Yeah, he's still a number of uh, David Moyes' first team coaches have been dismissed, including Kevin Nolan. Oh, yeah, the, 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 sure. the, the names of the first team coaches, Kevin Nolan, John Heitinger, Billy McKinley. Yeah. It is a who's who of former Premier League fine players. Good midfield <laughs> player, um, Billy McKinley from mm. Blackburn, wasn't he? Um, I can't imagine Kevin Nolan vibing with you and Lopetegui particularly. <laughs> Has he still got Andy Carroll in the spare room? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah, you should go. Is, is Carroll still at Amiens? Yeah. yeah. God, there's there a job go. for you. It's yeah. a lovely spot as well. Love, lovely little commute through the Euro Tunnel markers from Essex. Absolutely right. And a, and a stadium akin to something out of Jurassic Park, as I've mentioned before. Do Google image it. You'll know what I mean. <laughs> um, now, Liverpool have, uh, of course, announced the arrival of Arnie Slot. Uh, which is all very exciting. Um, Slotty. Slotty. Slot yeah. him in there. Um, yeah. did, did you see the footage of Slot uh, playing football the other day? It's been doing the round. It's glorious. Well, they're big up and under into the sun exactly. to dazzle the uh, opposition players. That's right. That was, that From was, kickoff. Yeah, it's important yeah. to clarify. That. that was framed by a lot of Liverpool fan accounts as an aggregated marginal gain. <laughs> oh, yeah, you dazzle the players, they yeah. can't see, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you can score. Well, well I mean, but, well, the, the, the numbers um, proved proved that to be the case did they not yeah. apparently they scored seven times that season in like the first ten seconds in a game or some some yeah. mad thing like well, that it is an extraordinary piece of footage because if you haven't seen it he, he the kickoff is taken and he has the ball at his feet on the half, back, obviously a halfway line and he just flicks it up and just boots it up and so, he doesn't boot it that far and it's the height that's the, the point height, we yeah. have to make and there, the commentators just start laughing don't they yeah. <laughs> whether it's a marginal gain or not it I does thought it just was, look absurd I thought it, it was like a charity match the first time yeah. I saw it because I thought this can't be... I like, I just love how much of a meat and potatoes footballer he looks. Oh, like, he's, he's like probably like Sean Gregan of a player. Imagine if and then he's managing <laughs> Liverpool. It's brilliant. Great it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, we look... For, look. We, we want to see Liverpool play like that in the Premier League. Because it'll just be hilarious. <laughs> Who's your player who can kick it highest in the sky? I reckon Dominic Schobbers like. Yeah, he'd be oh, good. that'd be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he'd be taking out clouds. Look, look, Mac I know Alistair you've done as well. Way. Yeah, pardon, Mac Allister as well. Yeah, I think so. I, I get. I guess you put your arm around them in training and go. Look, I know you've scored a lot of long range shoot shots before. 
I want you to go long range in a slightly different I want you direction. to imagine the goalpost is in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> want... Aim at that big flaming ball up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go on, Trent. Bend it round the rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've got a lot of options, haven't they? They've they got do. a lot of players as options for this yeah, yeah, when, yeah, you, yeah. when you think about it. Alisson, just thump it. Be beautiful. All uh, right. Well, yeah. G- good luck, Arnie. <laughs> so, I mean, he's a really exciting appointment for the league, isn't he? Mm. He's, he's a, a, from what I've read around him, he's, he's kind of seen as a bit of an overachiever, which for very obvious reasons mm-hmm. is, a, is a good thing for, for Liverpool to have. I think you could argue that Klopp did that at times as well. I saw this interesting analysis from a data company that uh, apparently take loads and loads of numbers, crunch them all together and says, this manager's style is comparable to this manager's style for X reasons. And essentially, um, slot is fairly similar to Klopp but a little bit slower and if you're a Liverpool player that's ideal yeah. <laughs> I know how to do this but uh-huh. I can do it without running quite so much yeah. yes please <laughs> yeah we might be able to not have the season off after two but or I think three you have seasons. to do, you have to do Premier League waiting to yeah that, sure. d- don't you mm. between Eredivisie and Premier League how hopeful are you for young slot Andy well I've, I've been wanting to see him have a crack at the, really? the Premier League for a while it looked like he was going to Tottenham last year but to come in at the top with mm. Liverpool, it's, it's a massive challenge, and mm. he's, he's obviously he's obviously confident. Look, I, I think in terms of in terms of communication, in terms of the way he is, or sort of puffing his chest out, I I think it'll be really really interesting. Mm, okay, now tonight, everybody, it's the Europa League final: Atalanta versus Bayer Leverkusen. Oh, one for the hipsters! Tasty. Yeah, Come massively, on. massively. Come on, and it's it's beautiful. This because whichever side wins, then surely. We're all happy about this because, yeah. you know, Bayer Leverkusen, it'd be an incredible story. As we know, they've been so, so flipping good this season. They're two wins away from a completely unbeaten season in all competitions. For a side, as we know, were nicknamed Bayer Leverkusen, who'd never won the Bundesliga, da 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 For them to go that Now they're season, never losing, aren't they? Ah, mm. there you are. Um, uh, it, it's it, it, Stealing it, jokes off OTC. I mean, honestly, no, that's, is, it's a reference is, that, to that. is that what we've come to? It's a reference to that. Is that what we've come to? I was to? bigging you up the other day. Look, you should paint on that. I'm just a little yeah, word. Anyway, more on that in a moment. Yeah, I will. Look how annoyed he is. Look Pathetic. At <laughs> <laughs> I was saying it because I listened to OTC. Yeah. I was giving you a nod. I actually looked in your direction when I said it. Yeah, but I mean, people listening wouldn't have known that, would they? If I ring fence, <laughs> if I ring fence all my great fucking lines, we'd be here all day, Andy. Yeah, trying to find them. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, yeah, Levy, So if Leverkusen oh, I win, did one, I did one a season. Yeah, I, I know, on. I know, and we give you credit for that. But Leverkusen, um, it would be extraordinary, and it would be, it would be, it would be lovely to see them win it. But of course, Atalanta. What motivation? Like, come on, you know, like... Wh- Let's be the biggest bastards in the history of European <laughs> football. Well, but they wouldn't because they've got their own story. I mean, the last time they won the, uh, a trophy was the early 60s, I think, when they won the Coppa Italia. And if they win, they go into the Champions League, right? Of course. Yeah, they and they came fifth this season, didn't they? They just missed out. No, because top the- five is good for Champions League. Oh, because the... Cause yeah, the, um, the don't worry about that. Because the coefficient. So, so they won't have a sixth team in the Champions League then, no? No, well, if Atalanta win the Europa League and finish fifth, not fourth or third, but fifth... Then Roma, who are sixth, qualify for the Champions League. Holy hell! So there's six Italian teams in the cha- in the Champions League. Yeah, well, if if Dortmund were to win the Champions League, then that means that Eintracht Frankfurt, who finished sixth by quite a long distance, get in the Champions League. My goodness me! My, it's almost like it's a European Super League being snuck through mm. the back door with loads of teams. It's isn't called it? Serie A. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. They're back, everybody. They are back. But I mean, look with. With Atalanta, the point I'm making is the only major trophy they have was in the early 60s, the Coppa Italia. Oh, it's uh, underdog city. Yeah. It, it, exactly. But, I mean, and Gasparini w- himself has never won a major trophy and yet such a, a storied... I'll be pleased ending. for him, for sure. Yeah, he's 66 yeah, years so, old. Yeah. So again, the way that they've been playing in recent seasons, the way that he is... Um, you know, it's such a great story, those two together... Um, it, it's you know if, if Unai Emery was to continue this with with Aston Villa and they were to keep going and so on, I, even Villa though I mean they have won the European Cup. I'm trying to think of a comparison yeah. really with Atalanta, really, but surely with, yeah. with Atalanta though because the story around Europe is of, of Leverkusen doing this potentially unbeaten season in all competitions. Atalanta are going to going to know that they go into this almost like yeah. with everyone hoping they're going to lose, and obviously that that should make no difference to their fan base and those players. But you use it right; you've got to mm. use it. I think, you've I got think, to take yeah, it onto yeah, the I mean, pitch. I, I think, but Atalanta, I think, are such a likable club, and as I say, they they have been such a just an incredible credit to themselves with with a limited budget, with with what you would argue a limited squad, and how they've done it and gone into European competitions and 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 been bothering the top sort of four or five spots in Serie A fairly consistently now. Like for a number of years. Yeah, exactly. I think the point that Nicky Bandini made on OTC actually the other week about the fact that 
post COVID, they've really brought life, hope, and optimism back to that city because mm-hmm. Bergamo was yeah. the, the first big European city, the first European city that was majorly, majorly hit mm. by COVID. Mm. And it had a massive effect on the yeah. on the daily life of the the the, 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 the city. So it, it would be huge for them. Yeah. Gas- Gasparini has done so much in bringing like optimism yeah. and hope. He's, also, he's also been there for ages and he's also, yeah. as you say, not, not really won an awful lot and it would be a little bit reminiscent of when uh, Maurizio Sarri won a trophy with they, Chelsea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the footage of him looking at the medal and how amazing yeah. it was because he that, never really won. But that was with either. Chelsea. This would be with Atalanta. So it's better. <laughs> it's therefore more enjoyable. Yeah. and I, I, So, I mean, if Bayer Leverkusen, of course, have won the league and they will win the cup against Kaiserslautern. Yeah. You know, so one could say, well, they've got two trophies, Jim. Why don't we give one to Atalanta? But whatever mm. happens... I don't think they will be saying that. Whatever happens... It be, they'll become Atalanta if that happens yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's an intriguing final and as I say there is a sort of purity about it in, in those sort of footballing terms because you have these two sides as we've just talked about going against each other and one of them will win the trophy and also as, I think it's just it's it's not the Champions League final it's the Europa League final but it's still an em- enormous game and, it, and it, I think it just gives a lot of people hope that you can take an unfancied side and just coach them really well, obviously make some canny signings and all the rest of it, and reach this level of football. That's what this season has been about in a a few spots in Europe, particularly in Germany, Mm -hmm. I think. when you Well, you could look at Italy as well with Bologna third at the Mm -hmm. moment, um, under Thiago Motta. You could look at Stuttgart finishing second, having had to escape relegation through the relegation playoff Mm. last season. But having said that, I bet Xabi Alonso, obviously, he's polite to a fault. And he'll be sitting there going, yeah, I really respect um, Gian Piero Gasparini. But can you take a free kick like this? Did you see him in training no, yesterday on the pitch at the Aviva? He was just pinging free kicks and it's just like... Nice. Now watch this drive. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's just looking at that. Going, Come on. I, um, you can give yourself five minutes if you're winning at yeah, the Yeah, but then Gasparini came out and went, yeah, but can you do this? Took his jacket off and launched it into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was reading on Opta that they've played each other twice. Um, before and, and Atalanta won both games. It was in the Europa League in 2022. Atalanta mm. won both home and away. So. I mean, I mean, Xabi Alonso is on for a Andre Vieira Boris esque season when in, it was in at the Porto. same place. In the it was, oh, it was in Dublin, wasn't it? When yeah, it was the two Porto Portugal. versus Braga. Was yeah, incredible. Although Porto in lost a couple of games that were they were already through basically in the, in the Europa League. Yeah. But anyway, without going into too much detail, incredible. Well, um, look how it worked out for him. So listen, uh, Javier Alonso, <laughs> maybe your next move won't be yeah. Bayern Munich or Liverpool. Maybe you'll be doing the Bakar rally. I don't I don't think... Time. Yeah, well, and, and what a thing that would do. It'd be amazing. Yeah, They're doing yeah. handbrake turns in a car park and being president of a bar in like five years' time. Is that <laughs> what we're talking about? I don't think we'll see Javier Alonso ever manage Tottenham Hotspur. No, probably not. Mm-hmm. And that is a subtle dig. Yeah. Uh, but uh, by Leverkusen, if they do go this season completely unbeaten, they won't be able to call themselves the Invincibles. This is Jens Lehmann again. This is quite incredible. So obviously, Arsenal have their Invincible side uh, back in the day when they went a whole Premier League season. We do stress Premier League season going unbeaten. Um, Jens Lehmann, one of the players, very key to that side, has has got the branding rights to the name the Invincibles, mm. right? <laughs> this emerged uh, in 2022, and uh, the, the, the Arsenal Football Club don't have the rights to this. They, they've only sort of fairly recently learned of this. Like they didn't like, think what? to copyright it. Yeah, I, I mean, I find the whole world That's of copywriting and so on quite fascinating. But Mad Yens back in 2020 he said, "Thought, hang on a minute, it's coming up to the um, 20th anniversary. I'm a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of thing would I do? Yeah. yeah, is this before or after he took a chainsaw to his neighbour's house because he was blocking his view? <laughs> I did, might prob- have been around the same time. Same afternoon, I reckon. Yeah. Jim. he was on a roll. Cost him thirty grand, apparently. So to, he to said, do this. he said that yeah, it's cost him thirty grand, and uh, he's got the branding rights for the Invincible. So Arsenal sell Invincibles merchandise mm. in their club shop, and he doesn't know what he's going to do about that. Well, from he, the interview I've read, he did say that his former teammates were probably quite pleased because now you know they've got he's got control of it yeah and he's, he's yeah. thinking let's do some legend games it, well, and all that's going to be amazing do you think Ashley Cole's going to be thrilled about that idea yeah well, also, I just think the idea that you would go that was an amazing thing I was a part of didn't it happen the first season he signed for Arsenal it as well did, yeah. so the first thing he did like amazing transition into a new club they go and beat in the Premier League never been done before never been done since his takeaway from that is can I get more for me selfishly yeah, yeah. out of that experience? But uh, like, he's, he's, not, he's not set up a shell company and, and signed them all on the shareholders and said that as a team, we're going to have voting rights, we're going to do like, mm. we, we'll do it all together. He's gone, I'm having that. Mm. 
It's outrageous. Is so what, what, it is. what are Leverkusen going to do if he owns the Invincibles and Luke owns Never Losing? Yeah. What are they well, going to do? Me and Jens together, we'll do a podcast. We've got Statler and Waldorf from the Muppets. <laughs> 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 oh dear well yeah so Jens is in charge of the Invincibles um, yeah. until he um, I don't know rescinds it or if there's a time limit on these things I have no idea everybody but Arsenal Football Club are going to have to rethink the yeah maybe the everything was going so well yeah <laughs> Just find it extraordinary. Well, it was the era of uh, Wenger. You just call it Les Invincibles. There you are. Instead. There You'll... we go. Oh, he's got Don't. that one as well. Do it in German. That'll annoy Jens. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.